Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Tanut here. Well, today I've got a new video for you. This is the next in the series of my customer build, uh, the Nightcrawler. Now, this is a Case Labs uh, S5 case. And what we have now is the um, pump top for my D5 pump that we're going to wind up putting inside of there. And this uh, pump top that we received was the EK D5 X Top CSQ. And it's going to go down in uh, that uh, space down there, right just underneath the reservoir um, and down by the power supply. So let's take a look inside now. The EKD5 X Top CSQ, they do make it in black acetal and also uh, a smoke, but this is the white acetal version. And uh, this matches the uh, color scheme planned for this case. Let's see what's inside the box. We have a so basically a, a clamp block with the O-ring. We have the uh, screws and some tools, the instructions, and then uh, here we have the the white acetal block itself. Now we have the uh, badge in the corner there, and uh, just really nice, solid design. Let's just uh, open it up, take a closer look. Real nice solid block machine nicely uh, on the side here we have uh, one of the outlets threaded G quarter outlet and down in the corner on the top and then in the center is the only inlet as well and then on the side we have a couple of uh, mounting points that you can mount a, uh, a base plate to so you can use that if you uh, if you want to now assembling a D5 pump into this uh, pump top what you do is uh, we'll take the O-ring and you uh, can place it down around the rim and then set the pump on it but I rather um, actually just pick it up and put it on uh, the uh, the rim of the uh, pump so you get it uh, aligned up hopefully get it to stay a little bit and then just set it right down into the pump top so I found that's the easiest way to get it aligned and then you take that clamp piece and you make sure you slide it through the correct way through the power and RPM cable if you have one on your pump and then what you'll do is uh, make sure you have the uh, the one with the lip so that you can put it right over the o-ring and the rim of the uh, pump and basically that sandwiches it down and keeps it in place and they provide you with some uh, button head allen uh, screws that you go ahead and put in and secure and once you get them all in there and get them started, you see they provide a tool. You can take that uh, tool then and uh, tighten it down. I tend to do it in a star pattern. Um, you probably don't have to do that, but I just have a habit of doing that when I'm tightening up a bunch of screws like that around uh, the block to get a good even seal. And there we have it. Nice. There's a lot of extra cable, which I'll be trimming down and sleeving, but for now, I'm not ready to do that yet. And... Uh, block looks good they do provide a uh, stop fitting plug to seal up whichever outlet you're not going to use I'm not sure which uh, outlet I'm going to be using so uh, I'm not going to install that yet but they also give you uh, the tool for that another Allen wrench uh, tool and then uh, this is the base plate I mentioned earlier uh, basically you take a couple of uh, uh, some uh, countersunk flatheads and you're able to screw that down right into those places on the block and that would uh, serve as a uh, base plate maybe give you a little more stability but I'm not going to use that in this build uh, I don't think so uh, that's it that's the uh, D5 pump mounted into the uh, pump top now let's get it into the case and see how it looks okay so now that we have the pump assembled um, basically there's only one in inlet into the pump top so we're gonna have to come into the center here so at the bottom of this reservoir there's actually three ports that I can use so I'll position in a particular area that have the have a, a right angle fitting come down and out and then feed this uh, in, you know the the end to the pump so that'll be uh, that has to happen and then coming out I can either come out from this outlet or this one and uh, I don't know if it makes more sense to have right angles come out I might do that uh, for looks um, but functionally it's got to come out of one of these two and then I'm going to go into this port on this uh, on the radiator here the, the 240 in the front I'm going to come out the other side and then come up to the top here to this uh, 
uh, of the 280, this in on the 280 of the uh, radiator, and then come out, and then I'm going to feed the the CPU block, and then go to the GPU block, and then we'll come back out and feed the uh, res. So um, that's the uh, pump loop that I have uh, envisioned. So anyway, so that's where we're at right now. So now I need to uh, plan out which way we're going to have the pump face. Now remember, you will not see this down here. This is blocked. The window is here, and there's a full window on the other side. So you won't see it, so I'm going to uh, get some fittings out. I'll show you some of the fittings I'm going to use, and then I'm going to start uh, playing with the, uh, the fittings to get an optimal, optimal uh, fitting connection down here in the bottom, and then the rest is going to be you know, acrylic tubing uh, for everywhere else that you can see. Okay, now that we have the block all set up with the pump, I'm going to start uh, assembling some fittings. One of the things that uh, we have to do is put a drain loop in there and customer provided a bunch of these uh, fittings. Some of these are monsoon. We have some bits power. Uh, but one of the things we have is a cool black and white um, T valve. So this is going to be for the, uh, the drain loop. So I'm going to put that in there. And then we'll decide what's best to use for the rest of these. Uh, we've got a good D plug set here. Some's in red, some's in white. Um, so we've got a, you know, either it's going to be, it's going to be red, white, or black. Um, but one of the things I'm going to do is using my stock of uh, fittings, I'm going to go ahead and put together um, the right fitting set that we need to, uh, with the extensions and things to get it all mocked up. And then we'll decide which color we're going to go with. Okay, we have the fittings now installed. And uh, after a series of trials and changes, I think this is the uh, configuration we're going to go with down here. We've got uh, extensions coming from the radiator uh, in white, ending up in the uh, black uh, EK 16 mil fitting for the tubing. And that's on the other side, and that is directly under the, uh, the one that's going into the rat at the top. So I should be able to get a straight piece of uh, tubing between those two. And then uh, on this side here, we have a, a red Q fitting with a um, temperature probe in one end and that port on the other side here is the EK fitting and I'll put a clear piece of tubing uh, bent to get to the uh, top of the block <coughs> and that'll be uh, out of the block and into the rad and then also we have here the lowest point in the system is a T valve so I'd use the combination of uh, red the blood red with the white valve here and mixes it up we have the uh, black uh, extension to a uh, triple rotary going into with a, uh, a D plug going into the top of the uh, pump there. And so that's, uh, and then the customer had provided some white fittings there, low profile, so I went ahead and used them, especially here. I did check the side window panel does fit just fine without interfering with that. And then up at the top here, we have another uh, Q which has uh, the return coming into the res right here. So there'll be tubing coming from where the graphics card will be sitting. And then uh, we just have, I have a series of plugs, some white plugs here. We didn't need these ports right here. And then I put a red one at the top, I think, to help contrast with the red up here. And that is going to give us the, uh, that's going to be our fill port. Or you can actually take off any one of these if he wants to. Um, but plan right now is that uh, the top plug will be the fill port. And then there is no, on the other side, it's just uh, flat. <coughs> Take a look. And then you go, you'll be able to see right there, it's just the, uh, the back end of the tube. So the only thing I wish is you could, if you could get excess PC instead of that G quarter adapter to the top of this res, if you can get that in a black or white, that would have been nice. But it's only available in that uh, shiny silver. At least that's what I could find. So. Uh, yeah, right now, um, we're just about ready to start uh, making the tubing and bending tubing. Now, the only thing I need le have left to do here before I can actually bend all of the tubing is to get the graphics card, the GPU, uh, assembled so that it is ready to uh, be included in the loop, and then I can start knocking out some uh, tubing. I have all the uh, pieces ready to go. So... Let's uh, all 
Đấy. <cười> All right, well, time to uh, assemble the GPU with its water block and back plate. So here we go. We have the BitsPower VG NGTX 780. It's an ice black acrylic top that's going to go on top of the uh, EVGA GTX 780. But the, we'll be taking off that uh, the ACS cooler. Then we also have a, a backplate, BitsPower back, backplate specifically made for it. Back cooling panel NGTX. TI-780 carbon black so but first let's take a close-up look at this uh, beautiful block let's see what it looks like I have a version of this that I did on my s3 build on a 780 and uh, it is gorgeous and here we go this is a full a full block as you can see from the tip to the end covers up the whole PCB and it's got like a uh, it's like it's a charcoal smoke acrylic with uh, this is etched in this is really nice the VGNTX 780 and the bits power logo this is solid and you can see here on the back just all of that uh, nickel plated and uh, CPU places for the caps and everything the memory lands and then also there's uh, some space that you can see that they have for some of the other pieces on the board. Maybe some chokes. I'm not sure what's in that spot. But uh, it really, really is a beautiful quality looking and feeling. This thing is really quite heavy. And then also we have here a kit of material with some uh, uh, O-rings. Some, uh, what they looks like they put some ceramic too. There are some bits power, nice bits power plugs, and then all the pieces you need to be able to mount it. And the other thing I'm going to have to look at also is uh, you know, replacing those screws with whatever is needed here. There's also some uh, thermal pads and uh, material here with the back plate. So I suspect I'm going to have to cut some thermal pads to fit. And we have uh, an instruction sheet right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the cooler off of the 780 and get it prepped and ready to mount this block on it. So I'll have that, uh, I'll show you the whole process. I may speed it up so that uh, you don't get too bored with uh, screwing and unscrewing, but I'll uh, take you through so you can see how it uh, gets assembled and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll describe it as we go through. All right, about ready to remove the stock cooler. Uh, from this uh, GTX 780 and uh, before I do that to get everything prepared I have my wrist strap here it's uh, middle of winter and staticky I have my the tool that I need to uh, disassemble this is just a small uh, Phillips a jeweler's Phillips screwdriver style then I have my trusty magnetic tray to capture any uh, screws with and uh, so that's what we're going to do. This is the ACS style cooler from EVGA and so but the original GTX 780 coolers like the Titan and all that have all that, uh, that full front with the glass and they usually have a couple of screws here on the end bracket that you have to remove but uh, this does not that is not the case here so uh, I don't have to worry about removing the two screws there. All I've got to worry about now is removing uh, all of these screws off of the back of the uh, card. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that now. All right, <clears throat> I have all of the screws removed from the back and I even removed the screw that was to this bracket here. I don't know if that's necessary, but we'll find out. So typically what you do is when you pull this off, you're going to be removing it. And the only thing that's be securing it to the uh, circuit card is the thermal paste that's applied between the coolers to the uh, GPU itself and then the power uh, for the uh, fans. So I'm going to slowly lift this away. 
And here we have the uh, power connection right here. So I have, all right. Now, as you can see, this cooler has another plate that's laid uh, here on top of the PCB. And uh, I believe that is also going to have to be removed. And I believe I removed the screws for that. So uh, take a look and see if that is uh, got to be removed as well. I think it does have to be removed in order to uh, get the block down there. So uh, I've got one part of the cooler removed. Let me set that aside. All right, now let me see. So all I did is just slowly worked from one end of the board, working it to the next. Looks like there's still a screw. I missed a screw. So check to make sure you get all the screws out. All right. And as you can see, I'm going to have to cut just about as many pieces of thermal pad. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, fourteen. I'm actually going to have to cut more because there are uh, you got to cover uh, a row of these little guys here. So these just cover the memory pads. I mean the memory um, chips, but all of these guys have to be covered too. And a couple of these, some of these. So I think I got to cut about 23 pieces of. Uh, thermal pad and apply uh, over this portion of the board. But before I do that, now that I have the uh, all the back plates removed, I've got to clean up the thermal paste that's on the GPU. So we do that with our trusty 99.9% uh, .9 isopropyl alcohol and my thermal pad remover. Towel. My thermal paste removal towel. Okay, now that we have the board cleaned and the GPU polished up, it's time to apply the thermal pads to all the places that I need it. So, out of the uh, uh, the accessory bag. I took out uh, all of these uh, thermal pad strips. They are all the same. They're all uh, 0.5 millimeter. And so what we're going to do here now is cut pads so that they can be applied in every place that the instruction has a, an illustration for. So it's all of these chips, not just the memory chips. And of course, um, that's not thermal pad. That's um, thermal compound goes on the GPU, but uh, everything else according to instructions shows you where it needs to go. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut these off camera and we'll come back after I've got all the thermal pads uh, applied and we're ready for the Thing next Thing to step. note with uh, thermal pad that you get with uh, all the major uh, you know, water block suppliers is that thermal pads have two uh, protective coatings on them. So there is, uh, I know you can see on this one, it's quite shiny. One side is quite shiny. And so, uh, you know, with your fingernails, if you have any, that side you should be able to peel off pretty easily. And then the uh, backing side usually has some kind of pattern, not always, but, uh, or might be a, a slightly different color. So. That one, you, you, here's the clear plastic that I have from this, from this one that came with the bits power. And then there is the other, and this particular piece has like a diamond pattern on it. I don't know if you can see that, but. So then you have to remove both of those sides. You do not want to uh, apply your thermal pad onto your ICs or whatever you're putting on with the plastic because then you're gonna create some uh, some thermal uh, problems for sure, and especially, uh, you know, your your ICs get really hot. Your pads um, will uh, that plastic will melt, and uh, I've never done it, but I would hate to have it happen. So, again, you know, just remember you have two coatings on either side of a thermal pad, and you want to make sure you remove them both. Uh, 
before uh, while you're installing them on your uh, graphics cards or wherever you're going to apply them. All right, we have thermal pads cut and applied. And now what I'm going to do before I put the block on there, I'm going to go ahead and uh, polish up the, uh, the GK110 by using some, just cleaning it up with some thermal material remover, some Arctic Clean, and then some thermal surface purifier. Now you don't have to use these things, but uh, I just get in the habit of using it. Uh, it's never had any problems and always uh, comes out good. So just to make sure that I've gotten all the old thermal paste off of there, I apply this to it and then let it uh, evaporate off and you can also polish it up with the other end of your uh, q-tip or other uh, lint free cloth all right and then I use some of the uh, purifier and same thing I spread it around with another q-tip a different clean one and you can usually actually see that uh, evaporating off and then polish it up. All right, so we got that done. Now it's time to apply some thermal paste and uh, I like to use MX4. I'm not gonna use the stuff that's in it, but you can, you can use the ceramic. And for GPUs, I do the uh, Actually, this is the uh, DX1, not uh, MX4. Yes, this is Nano Diamond Thermal, thermal Grease DX1. Okay, now that we have the thermal pads on and this block is heavy so be careful so now what I'm going to do is uh, position it onto the board and then I'm going to have to lift it over it in order to apply uh, to flip it over so then it lines up and then what I tend to use, like to use is the box all right now I have all of the holes are all lined up. Now since I will not be just installing, well, since I will be installing this back plate, I have to get out the, um, the appropriate pads that uh, you need to apply. So this is uh, a uh, back plate that you can use on a Titan uh, that also has memory chips on the back. Um, but even if you don't, on the 780, you do have to put a thermal pad here. And, and there's also uh, other areas that uh, I'm going to put a thermal pad on. And the thermal pads that come with this are pretty thick. I think they're uh, 2.5 by 10 millimeter thermal pads. So uh, you can see here, they're pretty thick compared to the, uh, the ones that go with the uh, other side of the board. So I've got to cut a piece out that's going to go right here in the middle over these guys. And then the other place to apply it is on... Um, there's no other chips on this area right over here right over these guys here so I'm gonna cut it to actually I'm gonna put it right in that spot I think yep all right so let me uh, cut some pad and get it in place and then uh, we'll continue with the install with the back plate okay I have the thermal pad over this section right here and that's uh, applied and then also have a thermal pad over the uh, circuitry behind the uh, right behind the GPU uh, just as indicated now if you had um, memory around here you can put uh, pads around there but there are no um, there's no uh, memory ICs on this side of the board because there's only three gigabyte on the uh, GTX uh, 780 and that three gig is on the other side so uh, now the one thing to note that this installation if you were going to install the um, the water block without the uh, bits power back plate you would not be applying these uh, pads or anything and you would be using the uh, screw this is a two and a half by six millimeter screw 
along with a washer. So this here is a uh, cap head screw with a uh, Allen head and there's a washer that you would put over each of the points and then screw them in. Now since I am installing a back plate, the back plate comes with its own uh, screws and they're um, countersunk Allen head screws. There's the same number, the only difference is, and the key is that they are, they are the exact same thread. They are also 2.5 millimeter screws, but they're 10 millimeters long. The other ones are six. Um, but if you'll notice on here, there's a bunch of standoffs that position it up from the board. And also, since we're using this thermal pad, that also, you know, uh, it, it's recessed inside this plate that also adds some thickness. So um, what, you, what I'm going to use is the screws that come with the back plate to install the water block. So Bits Power has engineered it, so the threads are the same, so you're going to secure it. So the key is getting it installed and getting it secured nice and tightly. And when I put them through, we'll see, they, sh they should not bottom out into the uh, threads of the block, but we'll find out. I don't expect they will. So now what I'm going to do is uh, line up the, uh, the back plate over, over the through holes here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the uh, threads around the uh, CPU. Mr. Oh my God. <laughs> Stop eating the sesame cake. And then we have some plugs depending on which side we're going to go with. Um, so that's a gorgeous block, nice card. Everything is uh, lined up on there. And then a nice clean back plate, really nice, nice back plate. All right, so we have the water block installed. Now it's time to install it inside of the S5. All right, there we have the GTX with the water block installed. And the fittings uh, in there. So now we're about ready to uh, tube it up with the acrylic tubing. The only thing that I need to do though first is I have a custom uh, air filter from DECMI, -E I believe, or DEMCI, that goes on the inside of this uh, flex bay so that the customer can vacuum from here out any dust. Uh, but in order to install that, I need to remove, I need to remove all that. So until the uh, custom filter comes in for the front, uh, I'm not going to go much further. I'm going to wrap up this video. Uh, next video will be Installation of that filter and then uh, bending and installing some acrylic tubing and then doing a leak check. So I uh, hope you liked this video. Uh, this is a Nightcrawler. If you liked it, please like and favorite. And if you're so inclined, please subscribe. That's it from Ron's and Nut. Thanks for watching.